What's going on fellas? Today we're talking gimbals and they're awesome, right? They give us super smooth footage in terms of our pan tilt and our roll. But steady cams generally still have a slight advantage over them because they also absorb your steps. So vertical motion of up and down, which gimbals don't do yet. Now there's the Airy Trinity, which is a combination of a gimbal and a steady cam. So it's really the best of both worlds. But the downside is that it costs a trillion dollars or more, more like $70,000, but it might as well be a trillion because we can't afford that shit. Now this is my favorite gimbal that I use for flying heavier cameras like the Arri Alexa Mini or the Red, which is the Movi Pro. This itself is surprisingly lightweight, but once you put a camera on here, then it gets a lot heavier and that actually does tend to help a little bit because you don't get too much of that bounce simply because it's heavy. But the lighter your setup gets, the harder it becomes to hide that up and down footsteps that you often see in gimbal videos. Now if this thing actually works as well as I'm hoping it does, in theory, it should give it another layer of stability on top of what the gimbal's already doing and make it look a whole lot more like an actual professional steady cam rather than a compact gimbal. But the big question I have right now is does it actually help absorb that up and down motion or does it actually make things worse by making it move more? I don't know. I'm trying to hold it stable, is it helping? Let's take it outside and give it some real world tests. Let's take a quick look at what we're working with here. Now this handle was actually specifically designed for the Ronin S. So apparently with the Ronin S, it can slide on and off pretty easily. All it is is just like a little latch back here. But this is the Moza Air 2, which has a slightly thicker handle at the bottom. So it doesn't slip on and off without actually taking out the batteries and this handle. So that's kind of a pain. Design wise, I think they did a pretty good job on these handles. I believe this is the second generation. They have a less expensive version of it, but they said this is better and more improved stabilization. These can flip upside down so you could hold that gimbal up higher. And I was just doing a shoot where I was filming an interview and I was just kind of floating around like this. I was really glad that these handles were down here because holding stuff up here compared to down here, it's a huge difference. Also for travel, these handles slide off pretty easily so you can travel with it a little bit more compact. I did notice this handle starting to slip on me, but I think that just wasn't tightened down enough in the factory. There we go. Yeah, so all it took was a little bit of tightening. And there are these knobs here, which is used to kind of either tighten or loosen the strength of the springs. And that's all gonna depend on how heavy your camera and your gimbal is. Boot up the camera and there we go. That's what we're working with. Now, in terms of the gimbal itself, I have the Moza Air 2. They sent it to me to try it out. And my first question was, well, how does it compare to the Ronin S? I actually never really used the Ronin S for more than five minutes, so I can't say for sure. But my homegirl Atola Visuals did a video on it, so go Click it if you want to see a comparison of the two. She says she prefers this over the Ronin S because the biggest complaint with the Ronin S is how big and cumbersome it is. And it's about half a pound heavier than the Moza Air 2, which is actually a pretty significant difference if you're trying to hold a gimbal up for very long. And the Moza Air 2 is claiming a heavier payload. Is that true? I don't know. I have to test them side by side. But yeah, with the Moza Air 2, I've generally been happy with it so far. One complaint I do have is once that battery life on the gimbal starts getting a little bit low, the camera motors do cut out. So ideally, you really want to be running these things with full battery life, with a fresh charge. But if you start getting kind of lower, like almost to the bottom, then this thing is not going to be reliable at all. It's going to be working for a few seconds, then it's going to dip out. And then it's going to come back and stabilize for a little bit longer and then dip out again. And I actually noticed that a lot of other gimbals do that as well. So keep some fresh batteries in your kit. I do still kind of want that Ronin S because it seems to be able to fold up smaller because you can take it apart right in the middle. This is one big unit, so you can't really compress it into a small box. And the box that this comes with is just kind of like a cardboard box, which won't last you very long. 
I regret doing this bit because now I don't have a box for my Moza Air, but this is what it comes in. This is not gonna last too long at all. You're definitely gonna wanna account for the fact that you're gonna need to put some money into a case. The downside I noticed with the Moza Air 2 itself was that I had a lot of issues with the roll. So a lot of times I would see a little bit of this or this, especially while I was doing like an orbit shot. So if I had a subject standing right there and I try to wrap around him, I would lose my roll and my horizon pretty often. And I'm not 100% sure why, because I have the latest firmware on here, I have the camera calibrated on here, and I have my roll horizon locked. So in theory, it should stay level throughout any sort of movement I do. But I've seen other people with the Moza Air 2 have no issues with that. So I don't know, am I doing something wrong? But besides that, every other move I've tried flawless. I also do really like the screen back here because you get to control all the parameters right here without hooking it up to any sort of weird app or anything like that. You could easily adjust the sensitivity of the gimbal. Now let's talk about the Z-axis stabilizer right here. These handles, are they actually useful or are they kind of gimmicky? And I would say they actually do help. It's kind of funny because the whole time we were using this, we kind of thought like, oh, I don't think it's actually helping. I think it's actually making the footage worse. But when we went back and played back the footage, it was always smoother when we had these handles. Now I wouldn't say it's a night and day difference. It's not like if you have really terrible gimbal footage, this is gonna magically make it better, but it does pad it with an extra layer of cushion. Of course, there's gonna be downsides to having these handles. One, it's gonna be bigger, it's gonna be heavier, it's gonna be more cumbersome. It takes a little while to get used to it, and also you're not gonna have as easy access to all these buttons back up here or up top on the camera. So I'd say if you're already really happy with the way your footage comes out from your gimbal, you don't necessarily need an extra layer, but if you do still see a little bit of that up and down and think it could be improved, then this is definitely worth a look. And this whole axis, the up and down, is an important one because you know steady cams they have that whole arm that stabilizes the up and down if you're going to mount it to a vehicle you can attach a flow city arm which will also help absorb a lot of that motion so across the board you can get pretty stable footage with a gimbal but this is just kind of that final layer to absorb anything you're doing in a footstep if you're walking through uneven terrain and there's also some nice touches like quarter inch thread at the tips of both these handles so if your gimbal itself doesn't have a place to mount a monitor you can mount it here it also comes with one of these adapters it has a quarter inch thread on the top. You can throw this on the bottom down here and these can clamp onto it down here. So that would actually make it easier to take on and off. But I personally would just rather mount it up here because first of all, your center of gravity is a little bit higher up here. And also I can't really imagine having one of these without these tripod legs here down at the bottom. And I also do really like how these handles can be used on many different systems. This can handle gimbal setups from 1.8 kilograms up to five kilograms. So pretty good wide range of stuff that you can use on here. Anyways, if you're interested in any of this stuff, I'll link it all below. But more importantly than these gimbals and cameras and all that stuff, I need your honest opinion. Take that poll. Is this the coolest car ever or is it super ugly? I'm on the fence. It's a Jeep Gladiator. It's the perfect vehicle for me because I really, really love my Jeep, but at the same time, I really want a pickup truck because I can utilize that truck bed. Sam says I should get a Toyota Tacoma, and to be fair, that was probably one of my favorite vehicles I've ever had was my Tacoma. That thing was a beast, but I also really, really love my Wrangler. I mean, my Wrangler, can go anywhere. So the Gladiator is kind of the best of both worlds because it has that pickup bed, but it's also a Jeep, so I can still have both. I don't know, it just looks a little bit unique and I don't know if I want it. Jeep Gladiator, more like G, I'm glad I don't have this <laughs> Ace. Shut up. Is Sam right? Is it too funny looking to get one or should I get one? Is it actually really awesome? I don't know you guys. Anyways, let's continue on with the comments. Night Owl said, what the fuck? How to cook potato. <laughs> oh! Hey, how come a lot of you guys put an E at the end of potato? Is that like how you spell it in other places or something? DSLR video shooter says, I hate haircuts too. The best part about being bald. <laughs> Catch the internet says this comment will get a heart. Okay, just because you guys ask for a heart does not mean I will give it, okay? I do not give in to peer pressure, except for just this, just this one last time. Ravencroft says that's the most irresponsible, dangerous, and idiotic thing I've seen in a long time. I love it. Sarad says, say my name loudly looking up in the ceilings. Why would I, why would I do that? Like I said, I don't just give in to peer pressure just because you guys asked me to. Sarad Pandy! There, see, I was not the one that gave in to the peer pressure, okay? Sam did. The mad scientist says, geez, that hair is lit. Read more. What is happening? I clicked the read more 
Did you just type read more in bold to make me click on it? How dare you fool me on my own channel. I always love the amount of doggy footage you put in your videos. Just in case that skateboarding dog footage wasn't enough. They want to see you more, so can you just hang out here for a little bit? This should up my like ratio, hopefully. You're moments away from becoming a literal jet, just upside down. <laughs> Paulo asks, should you use image stabilization when you're on a gimbal? It really depends on the image stabilization you have on your camera system. Sometimes it does help just smoothing things out a little bit more but sometimes the image stabilization can counter what your gimbal is doing. For example, older iPhones, if you throw those onto a gimbal, it actually freaks out a little bit. So you just have to try out your camera and your gimbal and see which one looks better. Edward says, my dog has three legs too. His name is Tripod. Wait, seriously, Edward? That's awesome. Just like Lefty over here. <laughs> Carrie was just saying the other day how she's like, maybe I should have put a little bit more thought into Lefty's name. <laughs> she gets a lot of weird looks when she tells people that her name is Lefty. <laughs> Tripod's a really good name. I also thought Southpaw would be a pretty good name for this one. At 831, I'm pretty sure that's a kangaroo. <laughs> that was the coolest dog I've ever met. Super happy, super cool. And it kept reminding me of like a T-Rex, just how I would stand up and just hop around. It was, a, it was super interesting to see. Also in my last video, I did a Canon ADD giveaway, which is still up for grabs. One of the requirements to win the ADD was to tell a family member that you love them. So one comment said, I told my mom I loved her and she asked me what do I want? That's honestly kind of like my mom too. Like we have a great relationship but if i ever say like i love you mom should be like what, what, what do you need? <laughs> the Linden Raid said, I petted my dog. Her name is Yuki. I told my mom I loved her. She told me to shovel the driveway. Paul says, a video with mosaic blur at the middle part of a Japanese guy. Great. Oh, that's... That's weird. That's a weird comment. If you don't get it, then you don't want to know. <laughs> Jesse Driftwood says, I feel like this video was sponsored by Canon, but I actually don't know. <laughs> it actually was sponsored by Canon, but they were pretty lenient on what I had to do and say. So yeah. <laughs> the top comment from the Canon video was Dan and Knack, who said the best sponsored video ever. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> so is Sam. Oh my God. Anyways, thanks guys for tuning in. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and all this other stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go take a nap now.